Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, I've been home for a while, as you can tell, a little dark. Um, I did a video before prior to this one, but my head was cut off here because I didn't have the angle of the camera right. So now, this is my second video that I'm doing, it like a, it's a remake, actually. Um, Anyway, the topic that I mentioned earlier when I left to go pay my cable bill is um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, the plow truck that I purchased and the story behind that. And I will leave, um, at the end of the video, I will leave, leave pictures of the plow truck as it is now. Um, I don't have pictures, prior pictures of it from when I bought it back in 03. Um, back in 03, um, YouTube never occurred to me, you know. I don't even know if, you know, YouTube was around then, I don't know. But anyway, um, I wasn't into taking pictures or anything at that time. Um, I do got pictures of it on my Facebook. Um, I'll be saving that for another date. I'll leave you know my Facebook you know link. Um, anyway, anyway, um, the El Camino was 1980, and I bought I purchased it 2003. I paid four hundred dollars for it at that time. Um, it came with everything except the motor. It came with extra parts, you know, extra grills and um, trim, you know, um, door panels, and you know, minor stuff, you know, small stuff. Anyway, um, my brother. Uh, my family is from Ohio. That's where I'm from. Um, so my brother gave me a 1980 GMC Sierra pickup. And it was a total rust bucket. Total piece of shit. But he gave it to me. Um, I knew it ran, you know, because I had it running. So. Anyway, me, my wife at the time, her daughter and her daughter's husband, um, we all went to Ohio to where my truck was and got the motor and brought it back here in Michigan where I'm at now. Um, anyway, um, time went on, um, got the car running, got the engine installed, um, drove it for like maybe two years and then um, decided to take the body off the frame I had the I sandblasted the frame and repainted it and put new body mounts on it and then before I was able to put the body back on the frame I left my ex um, and took it to my son-in-law's house at the time, Jeff, and we both work at the same job. He works, um, he worked second at the time, I believe, or first or second, I'm not sure, because it's been quite a while. So, on his days, um, off or whatever, he took a day off from work, you know, and he went and 
put the body onto the frame and reattached everything and had the car running, you know. And so I took it from there, moved out of my ex's house, and moved in to Hesperia, Michigan, where I stayed there for about two years. Um, then 2014 or 2015 um, I went and took the car over to my other in-laws house or ex-in-law at the time his name was Doug cool guy and his wife is just as cool as he is um, so he took the body off the frame and dropped, yeah, he took the body off the frame. Then he had a buddy of his that owned a high-low, you know, forklift, you know, motorized. And lifted the body up off the old frame and put it on his plow truck frame, which was a 1982 Chevy three-quarter ton, you know. The wheelbase didn't match the, the rear body of it. The front went down all right. But the rear wheel, you will see in the picture, is like this far off from the wheel well of the body. So it's longer. Um, but, which is okay, it's the body still got mounted and it works just fine, you know. And then, um, when I gave him the body, you know, we made a deal and I told him, you know, Excuse me. Um, if he was to sell it, I would like first dibs on it, you know, and, and he made that promise. So, he's had it from either 2014 or 2015, five, six years, somewhere around there. And then finally, four weeks ago, he texted me and said that he's ready to sell it. So, he gave me a number, and I said, Alright. And while he was at work, you know, I took the money down, went to his house, put it in the glove box of the El Camino, and I texted him and told him, you know, where the money was at. And he said, all right, you know. So I had to wait until I was able to rent a trailer that was big enough to haul that thing. A regular car trailer just wouldn't do it. Because or for compact cars. Well, a three-quarter ton truck was not a compact car and the wheelbase is a lot wider. It would have crawled right over the fenders. And so I just waited to get um, money to rent a trailer because, you know, I'm on a budget. You know, I can only spend so much. So I make sure my bills are paid before I'm able to do anything. You know, and so Got a trailer, loaded it up, brought it home, and thank God too, just in time because we got dumped on with tons of snow. And on our road, we're, 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 I live on a dirt road, and the plow trucks that plows the roads plowed snow right up and covered and filled my driveway so I couldn't get out. And thank God I had the plow truck. You know, and that was that. I took care of it. You know, I couldn't get mail either until I had a clearer path for the mail lady to be able to deliver our mail. So, which is another plus of having a plow truck. You know, replow, but the other plow trucks screwed up. So, that was that. And then when I got the call or text, so I went and got it, brought it home, and after I got done plowing for the first time, I took a closer look at it and realized that the rear frame rails from the rear tires on both sides, from the middle all the way back, rotted out. So I got plans. It was going to be a project plow truck anyway, because everything I can save for another vehicle, you know, transfer it over. So now I'm going to be shopping around for a 
half ton Chevy truck that I can turn into a plow truck and I'm just going to transfer everything over from the three quarter ton to the half ton you know and get it redone that way the rear well the rear wheels will be able to match the body wheel well you know after you see the pictures you'll know what I'm talking about and so that's going to be one project among 10 or 15 other projects I got going on that I got to get done this summer but I'll probably wind up starting them after I come back with my nine day ride um, I'm going to be um, traveling from state to state cross country so I'll be going I'll be gone for nine days, probably eleven days. I haven't worked that out yet, but I got to figure out my vacation and you know what kind of you know what finances I'll have to do it. You know, so I'm not going to get a motel. I'm going to be camping, moto camping off the bike. You know, pitching a tent right off from the bike and lay on the ground. You know, maybe get like a half inch foam. Probably about maybe a half inch or maybe one inch foam, probably about six feet, probably about 36 inches wide. Roll it up, tie it off, and strap it to um, sissy bar or something, you know, with tarp. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. If anybody has any good ideas, please link them down in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. Um, any suggestion? I'll, I'll look at all of them and I'll go with the best one because this is my first time doing a long distance ride ever you know when my dad died two years ago um, I had a 2000 or a 01 ultra classic you know had all the bells and whistles and me and my girlfriend traveled 450 miles, um, you know, six hours, six, seven hours to get there to be with my family at the time. And man, that bike rode like a dream on the highway. Oh my god, it would in and out of traffic like nothing. Holy crap. And, uh, and it only had an 88, you know, cubic inch. And that was a nice bike. But, you know, after um, slipping on gravel roads with potholes and everything and, un, you know, uncontrolling, un, uncontrollable weight loss from tilting, you know, my feet would kick out from underneath me, you know, on gravel. Or if you go to a bar and the parking light, light ain't working and you're not, you're blind and you put your foot in a pothole, that's another accident picking up your bike so I got tired of picking up the bike all the time I dropped it like maybe four times when I was in Ohio that sucked so when I came back me and my girlfriend went to Muskegon Michigan for bike time and we stopped at um, Hot Rod Harley Davidson and we were just there to pick her up another helmet you know because she didn't like the one that she had so while she was looking and a bike caught my eye, which was the bike I got now, it's my 07 Super Glide Custom. You know, but I've just featured in half of my videos. You know, you might want to go check them out. You know, um, leave comments. You know, anyway, that's another subject altogether. Um, but yeah, on the truck. It's, it's going to be a definite project, you know. I knew it was going to be a project. I knew stuff was going to have to be done to it. Um, I just didn't know how severe until after I got a real close look at everything. So, you know, I'm happy as hell that I got the body back and, and the truck. You know, I love the thing. You know, that thing drives and power horse, you know. I mean, it plows snow like crazy. So anyway, 
at the end of this video I'll go ahead and leave a few pictures of what it looked like now and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about with the rear tires then you know so that was that story on that to how it got to be um, put on a power truck frame you know when I was driving it on a regular frame when I bought the car and put the motor in it um, it drove nice you know that thing was nice but it was a one wheeled wonder you know it only spun on one side you know but I got another El Camino which is an 82 and that's another story I'll leave for a later date um, so it's getting late running low on beers and this rouse they hit the thumbs up hit the like button comment down below subscribe hit the bell notification so you can get uh, notified on my future videos have a good night be safe